Welcome to the Patient Education Series on Total Knee Replacement. I'm Dr. Kirby Turnage, and I'll be your host. I'm a shoulder and knee surgeon from Pensacola, Florida. I'm going to take you through knee replacement surgery in three parts. The first will be an introduction, which we'll continue here in a minute. Part two is actual surgical video. We will take you into the operating room and show you how knee replacement surgery is done. Frankly, it's pretty graphic, but I would rather you have more information than less information as you prepare to make your decision of whether knee replacement surgery is correct or right for you. Part three is the aftercare. What happens after your knee replacement? And we'll go over those details as well. What is knee replacement? Knee replacement is where we take little bits and pieces off the arthritic bone, including the femur, the, t the thigh bone, the tibia, the shin bone, and also the undersurface of the kneecap, also called the patella. We remove the arthritic bone, replace it with prosthetic implants so that bone is not grinding on bone, and that's how the pain is relieved. Knee replacement surgery is primarily for pain relief. It is a pain relief operation. Many times when you have relief of your pain, you will have substantial improvement in function. For example, if it hurts to walk, you're not going to walk as much. If your pain is reduced, you may walk a lot more. So even for cardiac health reasons, sometimes knee replacement surgery is a good thing to do. Before we talk about knee replacement anymore, though, I want to talk about the options for you that are non-operative that may actually get you from the verge of needing a knee replacement, so you think, to where you're doing actually pretty well and say, well, I'm not so sure I need a knee replacement. There are things such as visco supplementation. There are different brands out there, and these typically are either one, three, or five different injections once a week for over a three to five week period and there actually is a one week injection just a one time injection that can help typically we see between 50 and 75 percent of our patients do very well with this visco supplementation we also at times if i have a patient come in with painful arthritis and they may be a little stiff their muscle tone is not what i would like to see sometimes a single steroid injection often called a cortisone shot is put inside the knee. What that does is it calms the inflammation down substantially to the point where we can then get you in physical therapy. If we improve your range of motion, if we improve your strength, a lot of times that substantially reduces the amount of pain you have. Let's just say that you have tried all of the non-operative measures we have available to us that we've offered you and tried and you fail, which means, doc, I just can't live with this pain. I'm having pain at night and or I just can't do what's important to me. I'm miserable or the knee is not trustworthy and it's arthritic, whatever your reasons. If we cannot help you non-operatively and we see other evidence that you have severe arthritis of your knee, the knee replacement becomes an option for you. Let's talk a little bit about the pros, cons, risks, and benefits of knee replacement surgery. First of all, the pro, the reason to consider having knee replacement is pain relief. Again, if you have pain relief, a lot of times that improves your function as well. There are a few cons, a few potential complications we need to talk about as well. The first one we worry about the most would be infection. Fortunately, infection is a very rare complication, typically occurs less than 1%, in most series less than one half of 1%, and the reason for that is we take tremendous antiseptic precautions at the time of surgery, things like antibiotics before surgery, antibiotic irrigation or standard pulsatile irrigation during surgery. Many of us wear spacesuits. I personally do. That's where you kind of look like, a, look like a spaceman. And when you see part two, you'll get an idea of all the precautions we are taking, including frequent irrigation, the spacesuits, everything like that, that will decrease the risk of infection for you. The next risk we need to talk about would be the risk of forming clots deep venous thrombosis, DVT is what it's called. Fortunately, knee replacement surgery does not have as high a risk as, say, hip replacement surgery does in terms of the clots that form. All that said, if you have a clot, we really worry about that. It has the potential, frankly, to kill you. If you have a clot that leaves the lower extremity and goes to the lung, it can be a fatal thing. So we take it very, very seriously. Again, fortunately, knee replacement surgery rarely have fatal pulmonary emboli. A pulmonary embolus is where the clot goes to the lungs from the legs. We prevent that by giving you a blood thinner. Usually we start that post-op day number one. Well, while we do give you a blood thinner uh, and that prevents clots for the most part, it can actually cause bleeding in rare cases. So in one sense you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, but we have to balance this. It's a delicate balancing act between forming a clot and having bleeding, but we're very successful at this, but we have to prevent the clots. 
The third potential complication we need to talk about would be scarring. You can be the best patient, do all the therapy just as prescribed, and then some, and for whatever reason your body chooses to scar more than the average person. We may often have to take that type of patient back uh, who's had that unfortunate complication about six weeks post-op, bend your knee with you asleep, and sometimes we will go in there with an arthroscope, clean that scar out, and that usually takes care of the problem. Some patients also have continuing pain. We can look at the x-rays. The x-rays can look just perfect. Uh, sometimes we do not have an answer for why continuing pain is there. The good news is better than 90% of patients that undergo knee replacement surgery do extremely well, and we will work with you to sort out any potential complications that you have. I would like to actually show you a plastic knee model of a knee replacement. This is the thigh bone, this is the shin bone, also known as the femur, and the tibia. As you can see, there is a prosthesis on the end of the femur, on top of the tibia, and then there is a white polyethylene bearing surface in between, so that when the knee flexes and extends, the metal does not rub on metal. The metal rubs against the polyethylene. If you're very observant, you'll notice there's not a kneecap. There is a patellar component that fits right in this groove. You can see where my finger is. There's actually a guided groove right here. The kneecap runs up and down in here, and that takes care of the pain from the front of the knee. I appreciate your time here in part one. This is the end of part one. I hope you're looking forward to going on to the surgical video. I will warn you, it is graphical. It is the way we do it. It is accurate. I hope that that information doesn't overwhelm you. But again, I'd rather you have more information than less information. Thanks again.